Welcome to European Artist Heritage, Lecture Series Number 2. In the 16th and 17th centuries, drawing was the foundation for all visual arts. Besides painters, this included architects, sculptors, weavers, interior designers, printmakers, cabinet makers, and workers in precious metals. This lecture will primarily focus on the painting student and how drawing was intended, taught, and applied within a guild-approved workshop of a master painter. Lecture series number two contains seven chapters which should be watched in this order. The first three chapters are about drawing instruction. Drawing process in two chapters details the step-by-step -step procedure to include some unique Renaissance drawing concepts. A rare variety of drawings for specific and unusual creative objectives are presented in drawing purposes. However, before proceeding, a clarification is necessary for the sake of a factual distinction, and it begins with all artists of traditional realism both past and present, who have a shared connection, and that be a beginner's dilemma of learning how to see or to accurately portray that which is being seen. This has been solved through diverse approaches to drawing, especially in the manner or philosophies of art instruction. In this comparison, notice that there is a different look and feel in Raphael's drawing on the right from the figure drawings on the left. Notice how the modern drawings are executed with heavy-handed outlines of same line width. Straight, angular lines create stiff, robotic figures. Shadow edges stand out, causing a patchiness of light and shades with haphazard smudging. On the other hand, the Raphael sketch is gracefully animated with variable line work and glowing shades. Of course, certain disparities to be reasonably considered are the use of different art materials, individual expression, and personal knowledge, or lack thereof, in human anatomy, proportion, and the properties of light. One must realize that a 500-year time span separates the modern drawings from the Raphael, and herein is the factual distinction. The working mindset, instruction, and knowledge of the picture drawer has changed considerably over the centuries. Drawing realism today tends toward a one-method-fits-all rationality. It exists in a static formula with catchy concepts like the two-tone method, sight size measuring, the delineation of shadow edge, straight line block in, and shadow shapes. Today's drawings have a certain cliched appearance that lacks empathy. The very life existence of that being drawn is overlooked. The visual understanding of any object person, landscape, flower, or pickup truck is seen and executed in an apparent homogenized drawing process. In summary, the learning to see interpretation of modern drawing inclines one to focus upon, decipher, and indicate flat tonalities and their interconnections through the ability to see light and dark shapes indiscriminately, regardless of what form or object they may take or cross. This thinking tends toward a paint-by-number delineation, which recognizes shadow shapes in a monocular or flat way of seeing. Not so with 16th and 17th century European drawings. According to the manuscripts, the paramount concern of a Renaissance artist was to depict a three-dimensional likeness 
through the rational understanding of visual depth perceptions. Their way of seeing was binocular, not monocular. After all, humans are equipped with two eyes, not one. They were fascinated with the function of eyesight, realizing that one of its greatest attributes was how human vision could automatically focus from close-up details to the far distance while staying in one fixed position. This wide range of spatial play would be exploited by the 16th and 17th century picture drawers and to be commanded in both their drawings and paintings. These artists foremost considered where objects and figures were located in three-dimensional space and the angle from which they were viewed. They trained their eye to minutely see what came forward and what receded back, studying distant grounds and surface perceptibilities, foreshortenings and background set-offs, perspective and color, lights and shades. Such visual analyses would become an unconscious habit established very early in their training, especially rational optical perspectives. Consider the top left drawing of a vase by Ucello from the 1430s, a precursor for a computer's programming for the third dimension. In a compositional study of the image on the top, Leonardo da Vinci would use a squared floor to depict objects and figures receding in space, while also converging lines to the vantage point for the viewer's position. To the right, point of sight through the visual cone and its spatial intersections was a linear and a scientific concept, which was among the first lessons learned by young picture drawers. From a drawing book, the horse is considered within space according to the vantage point. The last image demonstrates that an accomplished Renaissance master had a cognitive recognition of how a figure or an object was seen from certain viewing angles. Thus, perspective was the grounding of reason for visual stability, understanding, and accuracy. These 17th century drawings were not started with the recognition of flat, interconnecting shadow shapes, nor with any measuring techniques of sight size or center line approaches. Here we see two artists who received a workshop training and yet developed their own variable style and master command. Hence, to art students today, to grasp Renaissance drawing methods, a reassessment is perhaps necessary. Avoid comparing or concluding the visual concepts of the past with the prevalent drawing strategiums of today. They simply are not the same. 16th and 17th century drawing presents rare, forgotten, and no longer taught drawing knowledge within its proper historic and artistic context. All material is based on solid research from several Renaissance art manuscripts, especially the instructional drawing publications used to train students under a master artist. Additionally, several drawing images and specific excerpts from these drawing manuals will substantiate the facts and reveal, through instruction process and purpose, their unique working mindset. Be awed and enlightened.